Hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. We're going to be looking here at the variance of a difference of two random variables. The variance of x minus y is equal to the variance of x plus variance of y minus two times the covariance of xy. Now notice how similar this is to an earlier result we've seen, the variance of a sum of two random variables, which is variance of x plus variance of y plus two times the covariance of x and y. Now spot the difference. Some of you like to play spot the difference. So on the right hand side, what is the difference or differences? Hopefully you can see straight away that the difference is only in the covariance. For the variance of the difference, where there's a minus, there is a minus in the covariance. For where you look at the variance of the sum, a plus here, there's a plus on the covariance. Otherwise, the right hand side's the same. Right, so let's look back at the variance of the difference. Now, often is the case that you see students writing minus and minus on both of them. But if you just think that the variance if you just think that variance can't be negative then you can see that if you have a minus here and you have a minus here then one number minus two numbers could well be less than zero could be negative which you can't have for variance so what this result tells us is that something else since the variance is bigger or equal to zero if you just look at this it must mean that there's a relationship between the sum of these two variances in relationship to the two times covariance. Observe that from here that the variance of x plus the variance of y minus two times the covariance of x, y which is equal to the variance of the difference and since the variance is, is always non-negative i.e. bigger or equal to zero which is bigger these two or this we can see that this one take it to the other side you will have the variance of x plus the variance of y is bigger than or equal to 2 times the covariance of x and y which could be a useful inequality you know that in statistics when it comes to proving things sometimes these inequalities turn out to be pretty useful so that is a, um, a result right the next task is to show that this is true and to show that it's true, let's recap that the variance of a random variable, say w, is equal to the expected value of that random variable minus its mean, let's use mu for that, and squared the whole thing in the brackets. So expected value of that expression squared, which if we expand out the brackets, we could get we get this expression. Which on taking the expectation through the brackets, as I've shown you mo in more detail earlier, comes out comes out to be this. Also, let's recap the formula for the covariance. Covariance of two random variables, let's use W is Z is expected value of w times z minus the mean of w times the mean of z. Okay, so all this stuff is just uh, a recap. And why have I written this down anyway? Why we're recapping is because of this. If we're trying to show this result, we are going to start off with 
an expression for the left hand side and then we're going to try to make it well we are going to make it so that's equal to the right hand side so we need to know what the definition is of the variance of random variable so for x and y is going to look once I expand things out I should get things looking like this the second or the third line or the first line but at the covariance we want to get that as well and we know that the covariance between two random variables is going to look something like this okay so the idea is we're going to start off with the definition of the variance of x minus y in terms of expectation and then we're going to manipulate it so we're going to get these three terms coming out there and we know what these three terms kind of look like because the variance will look something like the second line or the third line in fact we'll see that it looks something like the third line and for the covariance we'll see it looks like this and then we group the stuff together to get variance of x variance of y two covariance of xy then we're done so that's the idea of um, the proof so now we just have to do it okay the variance of x minus y now of course we could write it out in terms of the definition and expectations and f explicitly from the difference x minus y but this expression is a bit of a mess introducing x minus y so soon on the right hand side is a bit of a mess if you just recognize that variance of w w is a random variable well if we set w equal to x minus y this is some people call this a trick it's not a trick it's a method w equals x minus y we can see that we can substitute it straight into here or into here and we get a less messy kind of we don't have to then um, get such a messy expression if we, as if we substitute it into this first line which is what I've done x minus y x minus y expected value of x minus y expected value of x minus y straight into this first line I, I can take out that first line straight away by recognizing that it's like this which goes to this okay well if I work this through you'll I kind of see what I mean because I'm not sure that I explained that too well so if I want to miss out all this messy stuff line 1 and 2 by substituting x and minus y so soon I get such a ex messy expression I want to avoid that I'll substitute straight into this final one which gives me expected value of uh, w which is I'm gonna, let's, I want the variance of x minus y and substituting w equals x minus y into this third line you can see gives me it gives me this so that w I just replaced it by x minus y and this mu which is made up of mu of x minus mu of y by taking expectation through the brackets expected value of x minus expected value of y okay now we want to make the right hand side equal to the variance of x plus variance of y minus two times covariance of x and y and as I said earlier the variances look something like this or like this the covariances look something like this so that's what we're trying to extract from this on the right hand side okay so the most obvious thing is to expand out the brackets here okay so simple expansion of brackets this uh, first term has an expected value using the expectation operator take that through the brackets okay so I've expanded the bracket of the expectation also for this second term I've taken the minus sign through the brackets and you know when I take the minus sign through the brackets I change the sign so this minus plus is a minus minus and a minus is a plus okay so we've pretty much done the hard work now it's um, now we've got a group the stuff together can we extract from this the variance of x first yes because you know the variance of x because it looks something like this this here will be the 
expect a value of x squared minus the mean of x all squared. Well, let's say then this bit belongs, let's call it a variance of x. This bit also belongs to the variance of x. Great. So we can write down, collect it on the next line, expect a value of x squared minus the mean of x. How about the y? Can you spot that? Yes, that's one. Let's call it b so we know it's taken. And this one, there. So let's gather that on the next line as well, in a similar So we can see that all that remains, this term here, which has a 2, which is fantastic, because that gives us the clue that's part of the covariance, because it's 2 times the covariance, and another 2 here. Great. So if we put those together, that should be minus 2 times covariance of x and y. Okay, so this term and this term I put down here and they're in brackets so the minus sign that will be minus expected value of x and y which tallies with this one and the minus 2 times this 2 minus is a plus so it will become plus 2 mu x mu y which matches this. And this is the indeed the covariance for x and y because remember earlier I said covariance of between two things looks something like this between w and z is expected value of w and z minus the mu of z ta the mu of z mu of w and this is exactly the same pattern but for x and y so indeed it is the covariance so finally to tidy it up the satisfying bit here just to write down what we have that is the variance of x this one here this is indeed the variance of y and this thing here is minus the two times the covariance of x and y fantastic that was very satisfying I hope you found Let's just go back from this line to the final line. You find that when there are loads of terms, what I like to do when I'm gathering things is that I like to I put ticks underneath here so you can see that I've accounted for each term. Because if you don't do that, sometimes you, you kind of miss one out. Uh, you, some people like to tick it. Some people like to just put a cross for it or in pencil mark it so that at least you know you've, you've accounted for it. Okay. And why I put these A, B, C's below each one is just to show you how I've grouped them. So the A's, I've grouped them together. B's, I've grouped those together. C's, I've grouped those together. It's just, um, it's just uh, a recommendation for you, but you don't have to do what I've just done there. Okay, so pretty much we're done. But you know that with maths, you don't just, well, it helps to memorize these methods, but see that you really understand this I now want you to go away and basically repeat this proof but get a more general result show that the variance of a times x minus b times y where a and b are constants is equal to a squared times the variance of x oops plus b squared times the variance of y minus 2 times ab times the covariance of x and y. And if you can do that on your own, that means you pretty much understood it. Um, the method of this proof will be pretty much identical to what I've just shown you. Okay, so have a go at that and uh, let me know how you get on.